Good morning guys and welcome to Westo Fish HQ. So I get asked a lot of questions through the Facebook site on sounders and in particular the hundred million dollar question, how do I get a read at speed and why aren't I reading at speed? Now in theory it's pretty simple. Basically it's 100% transducer placement. It has nothing to do with your head unit. So it's of utmost importance that you have your transducer fitted schmicko so you're getting a great read at speed. Now this afternoon what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a few things whilst fitting your transducer to avoid uh, things like planing strakes, things like welds, uh, or anything underneath your hull that may create any interference or bubbles around your transducer while you're traveling from A to B. Then after that what I'll do is I'll show you the little trick or tips on how to mount, in particular, the Garmin transducers. So hopefully you guys, when you go out and get your kit, or if you want to set up kit that you've already got, that you're not getting a read of speed with, can go out there and fix it up, and go out there and whack a few. Okay guys, so at the moment we're positioned right behind the transducer at the rear of the boat. Now as you can see, this GT51 is mounted on the port side. We'll talk a little bit about that later. But what I'll show you through now is things that you need to avoid on the bottom of your hull to have a great read at speed without any interference around that transducer of yours. So what I've got here, I'll zoom right in here and focus in. Now what you can see there is what we call a planing strike. Okay, so a planing strike will give your boat um, turning stability uh, so you're not skipping um, and it also allows you to plane more efficiently. Now these things here obviously because they are an obstacle on the bottom of your boat they create interference. Now interference thrown off by those will create bubbles around your transducer which in, in turn will obviously not assist with the read at speed. The other thing you need to look for are little things under your boat which I have here. I have my transducer mounted straight behind my live bait tank. It's a self-plumbed live bait tank, so I have circles or drilled holes in the bottom of the hull. So what these can do also is create some form of interference in and around that transducer, which also can affect your read at speed. I'm pretty lucky in this case. Uh, I get a fairly good read at speed with this GT51, but things like that can create interference around your transducer. The other thing is, is you'll notice it's particularly with plate boats, you may find that you have small welds or slag or something like that that is left on the bottom of your hull during the building process. These also are things that you need to have a look at to ensure you avoid when fitting your transducer because they will in fact throw interference and a bubble trail uh, which will in turn run over the bottom of your transducer and affect your read at speed. So there are a couple of things to look for guys when mounting your transducer when you get it out of the box. Rightio guys, so now for the answer to the million dollar question, how can you practically get out there and mount your transducer so it effectively reads at speed? Okay, so I'll talk you through one thing. Generally as a general rule, they'll, you'll see in your booklets, okay, which will be your fitment instructions, they'll instruct you to fit your transducer on the starboard side of your boat which particularly is the starboard side of your engine. Okay, now the reason for that is because the way that the propeller spins, okay, there's a belief that on the port side, it'll create interference and turbulence around that prop, which in turn will affect your transducer. Now, through experience, I've done a couple now, it's not actually the case. My theory on it is, is that all the interference around and, and turbulence is created around your prop is, is thrust, and it's thrust rearward. So it's thrust rearward of your motor, and your transducer is mounted forward of your, your outboard. So I've mounted uh, probably two or three now and had no issues with interference. So there, you are able to mount it on the port side if you have another transducer on the other side, which is what I have. I have my UHD on the starboard side currently. So firstly, if you can, starboard side, but if you can't, more than accommodating to be able to do it on the port side. Alright, so there are a few things that you'll need when fitting your transducer. One is a good screwdriver. 
or I like to use an impact drill, okay, with a Phillips head bit. The other thing you'll need is a straight edge, a good straight edge. I use a, a builder square. You can use a 600 mil um, spirit level, or you can use a smaller square. It just depends on what you got. Anything that's straight, has a straight line that you ha have the ability to run down uh, the rearward of your hull so it can protrude and you can run a line along your transducer. The other thing you'll need is something to be able to level up your transducer once you nip off the inside screw, which I'll show you soon. Okay, I have a little a little spirit level, uh, as you'll see in this picture. It's quite small, and I think I got it when I had a flat pack furniture or something like that. Okay, perfect, because it's so small, sits on there, it's got the bubble, it gives you the ability to be able to get that bubble in between and nip off your transduce so it's nice and level. Obviously, this all needs to be done on a level surface, okay? So when you do nip it off, uh, it's all level. So guys, my transducer is already fitted, obviously, okay? So I'm not gonna run you through or unscrew mine and show you um, up and down how to mount it, okay? But what I'll do is I'll run you through how I do for the guys who will be fitting their transducer from scratch. So what I like to do is I like to get the bottom of the transducer, okay? I put a straight edge against it and I make sure that it runs completely parallel on the bracket with the bottom of the boat, okay? Now that's important for the next step. The next step, okay, is that we wanna get the inside, okay, closest to your outboard, not the outside, away from the outboard. Very important that every everyone takes this away from this demonstration. It must be the inside, I call it the leading edge of the transducer, closest to your outboard, is what's going to dictate whether you have a read at speed or not, okay? So, what I like to do is I run the straight edge along the bottom of the boat. Straight in the bottom of the boat, you can have a look there. Nice and hard up against that. And then I run the straight edge down the side of my transducer. And this is where it's important that you have your transducer nice and level with the bottom of your boat, okay? What I do is I run the straight edge along the, ins the bottom of the boat, along the inside of that transducer. And what I'm looking for is roughly three to five mil, okay? So again, put the straight edge on the bottom of the boat, run it along the the, uh, the side of your transducer on the leading edge closest to the airport and what you're looking for is three to five mil okay as a general rule there's a little bit of curve on the GT52 and the GT51 okay midway up that that radius of that curve seems to be the money shot okay sometimes you may have to go a little bit lower okay so about five mil which may be to the top of that radius but it's of utmost importance that leading edge okay is three to five mil below the, the plane of your boat. And that's why it's important to have that long straight edge. Now, if you aren't getting a read at speed when you're doing that, there is another small trick you can try to get a read at speed. Now that is, is tilt your transducer down about five degrees, couple of mil, okay? So the nose of your transducer is tilted down. And what I've found is that if you do do that, it can be effective in pushing out that interference and getting a nice clean read whilst you're at speed. Now the optimal reading speed is between 18 and say 22 knots, okay? Uh, interference is created a lot more, obviously, the faster you go. So the sweet spot you'll find with your own boat, but particularly most boats between 18 and 22 to 24 knots, okay? So guys, that's the wrap up. Uh, this is the GT51, also effective with the GT52, but you can apply the same things, the same theory and practice to some of the other brand of transducers, okay, um, to get an effective read at speed. I've done it with Raymarine, I've done it with Lowrance, okay, uh, and, and got an effective read with all those different types of brands. So have a play, by all means, shoot me a message if you, uh, you need any assistance with anything. Um, but until next time, I hope this tip was useful. Tight lines, and hopefully I'll see you on the water.